there. Welcome back to the Rare Book Views channel where I talk about how much I love books and collecting and reading. Today I'm very excited. I am starting a brand new to be read shelf and I am thrilled. I feel so accomplished when I finish it and it's really fun. I started collecting books ages ago but I'm also really frugal so things that I just want to read. If I find a, an expensive copy I can't resist buying it. And that means sometimes the books waiting on the back burner can hang out for kind of a long time. It'll kind of weigh you down. So what I started doing was saying, I'm just going to read this shelf next. And then it feels like you're really achieving something while you're working towards school. So it's really fun. It's also very exciting. And I get this big thrill when I finish one and I'm starting a new one, which is what I'm doing today. So let's take a look. I have some really good stuff. I found this book by Bill Bryson. I really like his stuff, but I didn't even know about this one. I found it at a bag sale, so it worked out to me because I got so many books in the bag. About a buck fifty, which is a bargain, and it is brand new. So this is one that it seemed like a great idea at the time, and it has never risen to the top. So the nice thing about the curating the To Be Read shelf is that I can kind of balance out the books that are probably good for me and that I should read, and the ones that just seem all fun all the time. So Agatha Christie, I've gotten into Agatha Christie. I'm on a real burn. She's got so many great books. So I have plenty. And this one, a friend of mine found a bunch of her stuff, vintage copies at a book sale. I think this was $3. It is a book club edition. It's a reprint. And you can tell in this edition, it says so right here. There's no, there's a mystery in this mystery. Um, you can kind of tell the paper quality is a little thinner than the original and you can almost see You can almost see through it. I make an exception for Agatha because find a vintage copy is really hard in any edition and Normally, I don't really love to have a copy where you can see through the text of the next page I find it annoying, but I make an exception for her and they're way more affordable if you're willing to do the book of the month club the Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This was on my wish list, but I don't know why. I don't know why. Did I read a review? Did a friend tell me? I'm not really sure. But I found this, I think also at that book sale. So it was $1.50, which is a great bargain. And I also got, oh gosh, this is on my list forever. Let's see, this one I paid four whole American dollars for, which is a lot for me. Women of Intelligence, but it's a beautiful copy. It's hardback. Women of Intelligence by Karen Tanabi. She has another book that's on my list too. I think this was something that I read a review of and it sounded really good. And it sounds like it's just gonna be frothy fun. So that is cool. Okay, Watch Me Disappear by Janelle Brown. I really like suspense. I have a vague notion that I've read anything by Janelle Brown before. And this one was $2, which just seemed like a great bargain. So that one is on the list. This is from that book sale, I think. Is that right? Yep. So this was $1.50. This is Young Adult. The Evolution of Col Colpernia Tate. This, I've seen really good reviews and I've seen it sort of prolific about. So I am excited to read that. And I have a couple of young adults in my circle who might get that next. Kristen Hanna, The Four Winds. Okay, this is on my list because Kristen Hanna is amazing. But she makes me cry. So... I don't know. Um, so she's so vivid. It's also just sad. But this was also in that book sale. So it's only $1.50. It seems brand new and like a great bargain. This is also from that book sale. <sighs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And it just seems like a fun history book. So this is one of those books that you look at it and you think, well, it's a bargain. I really think Ruth Bader Ginsburg was amazing. Her life is fascinating. This book is probably going to be really interesting, but it's one of those things that, but it's nonfiction. It's probably going to be good for me. So would I reach for it if I wasn't doing things by the shelf? I don't know. So that's perfect. Here's another one. The Bride Wore Black. Okay. By Cornell Woolrich. I read a review of this for sure. This book was published in the 1940s, and the review was, oh, this is really great. I read a couple pages, and I thought, oh, this is that kind of fiction that is going to actually take some thought to pay, keep up with, and I didn't finish it. So I'm going to finish it. It's on the shelf. I'm going to get it done. Okay. I think this to-be-read shelf could go into October, but it doesn't really matter. It's definitely going to be September. 
I really want fall. I really want it to be fall. I'm so excited about it this year. And Hocus Pocus the sequel um, by someone. Oh, they haven't listed the author. Oh, how funny, it's by Disney. Let's see if the title page will help us. Written by A.W. Jantha, based on the screenplay and the story by, okay. A.W. I'm sorry, you didn't even get on the cover. That's so weird for a book. It must be so hard to shelve in bookstores. Um, I got this at a book sale. It was not expensive. I love, love Hocus Pocus. And I was so excited when the sequel came out and I found this at a book sale, really inexpensive. So I imagine it's the same story, but it should help me get ready, right? It'll get me in the fall Halloween vibes. So I'm excited for that and I've been holding on to it for quite a while. And, oh, another Agatha Christie. Okay, so this is an interesting one at Bertram's Hotel. This one is not a book club, you can tell. It is price clipped. It does not have that. It says it's by Dodd Mead and Company, one of her major publishers. And then the copyright page says 1965. And it lists right there, second printing. 1965 is a little bit later for Agatha, so I don't think it's particularly valuable. But it is gonna be fun to compare um, the quality with the book club edition. So you can almost see the text through this one also. But I don't think it's that bad, I think it's fine. So I'm excited to read a vintage and then a reprint of her stuff because I have so many of her things right now. And then last but definitely not least, Neil Stevenson. Termination Chalk. I like Neil Stevenson. He writes some cyberpunk, he writes some sci-fi, he writes some things that are really weird and really strange and I love that. I love some weird plot things. But some of his, it's like he has two camps. There's the ones that are these sort of epic things where there's all these different threads and they all get tied together and then there's some that are sort of, I don't want to say religious, that's not the right word, but almost religious. And they seem to fall in these two camps of very cool and all comes together in a very satisfying way and then just weird. So I'm hoping this is going to be in the former and that's why I only buy his stuff used, but I love him. So I also tend to make shelf space, which means I really want this to be a nice edition. This is a stated first edition. His books always do this, it's very helpful just says right there that it's a first edition. So I can feel a little bit more comfortable making room on the shelves, which are losing or don't have a ton of real estate. So I think that that will, if this book is good, then I'll feel a lot better about keeping it and giving it a few inches of the shelf. So I have a pretty good balance here. A lot of books that are just for fun. And then some books that are gonna be good for me, some books that have been just on the shelf for too long. So I'm gonna get stuff done, I'm gonna feel accomplished, and I'm very excited. If you like this style of video, please let me know. I really appreciate everybody who sent me sort of kind, kind of comments. It's so nice to hear encouraging things from people. I think we just don't value positive feedback enough in the world. And it seems like strangers who like books on the internet, they are the right ones. So. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed or sent me a comment or told me about what you like about books or what you're collecting. It really does make my day, it's really fun. So thank you everybody for making that possible for me to have that kind of fun and for an excuse to read a little bit more. I'll let you know how it goes when we're done with the To Be Red Shelf. Thank you very much, happy reading.